Unsolved Mysteries. Truth is stranger than fiction. We are endeavoring to bring to you little-known mysteries of the entire world. And in this series of unexplained true happenings, we cannot overlook the puzzling and weird practices found in voodooism. There are strange stories of zombies. Stories which filter into the world of everyday life, leaving no room for doubt that within the cult of voodooism in Haiti, zombies do exist. Haiti, a few miles from Port-au-Prince, a long, low, rambling bungalow bathed in the liquid beams of a silver moon faces the open sea. Behind the cape rises in serried ridges of blacks and purples, and beyond that, faintly ominous, the deep, constant rhythm of the voodoo drums seems to belong to another world. Three men sit on the lanai or veranda facing the beach. One of them, tall, slender, Young in years, but with gray hair and blind face, stares out into nothing. The elderly man by his side looks at the third and raises bushy eyebrows. The third man, a stranger to Haiti, speaks. Very decent of you fellows to invite me out here. I sort of feel that, well, that I'm putting you to a lot of extra work. Not a bit of it. Servants take care of all the extra work. We're glad of your company. Clark. Yes, Strong? I'm going down there. You must? Yes. But don't be long. I won't. Uh, don't wait up for me. Good night. Good night. Good night. In a moment, after Strong's out of hearing, I'll be able to explain. That's all right. I think I understand. Just a minute. I'll look down the pathway. Yes, he's gone all right. In spite of what he says, we can't turn in. And although you're a stranger here, I'm going to do what white men have to do in the tropics. I'm going to ask for your help if I need it. You won't have to ask twice. I didn't think so. That's why I asked you at the hotel if you'd like to come out to our place. A few moments ago, you said you thought you understood. Yes, I know, of course, that it was just a year ago today that Strong's wife died. I was in New York at the time, and we were all very much upset. I never knew Strong, but I went to school with his wife, Helen. Well, it isn't because of his wife's death that I want you tonight, but because of what happened after her death. After her death? Yes. Do you know where Strong went just now? No. He went down to her grave, as he has every night for six months or more. Good heavens, why? That's what I'm going to explain. When Strong first came out here, he had a native servant girl. Clarissima, her name was. Attractive little thing. And she fell in love with Strong. Strong never gave her a thought. But you know native women. Yes, of course. Well, Helen came out here. And the night before their marriage, they were sitting just about here on the veranda. Oh, Johnny... It's so grand to be here with you. And what do you think it is for me, darling? To have you here in my arms. To know that tomorrow you'll be mine forever, darling. Yes, John. Forever. Oh, when I think of the nights I've sat out here dreaming, watching the ships sailing for the States, and then other nights when I've watched these same steamers come into the harbor and tried to imagine what you'd look like standing there on the deck coming out to me. <laughs> Did your dream come true, dear, did you find me changed? Oh, what little changed, yes, darling. But better than a thousand dreams. 
Ah, it's 11 o'clock, darling. Time for little girls to be in bed, especially when they're going to be married in the morning. <laughs> I hate to think of driving you out of your bungalow even for one night. I could just as easily have stayed at the moon time. Oh, not a bit of it, dear. It'll take me less than five minutes to walk down to Clark's place. Good night, dear. Good night, John. John. Well, Clarissima, what on earth are you doing here at this time of night? Why aren't you home with your father? I have been watching you. You've been watching me? You and the woman. What's the matter with you? What's come over you? What business have you watching us? I have every business. You belong to me. I belong to you? What rubbish is this you're talking? No rubbish, John. You have belonged to me since that night that the Bokar placed his spell upon you. Have you been drinking, Clarissima? You know I do not drink. John, if you marry this woman, I tell you something. In three months, she will be dead. Oh, now listen, Clarissima. I'm not afraid of your Bokors, your voodoos, or your wanga. I have told you. Marry that woman, and before the setting of the third moon, she will be dead. Clarissima spoke the truth. Before the third moon had set, Helen was dead. In his grief, John gave no thought to her prophecy, gave no thought to the warning that the wango or spell of the Bokor had been placed upon her. Clark, John Strong's friend, came to live with him. And one afternoon, Strong, arriving home earlier than usual, came up the veranda steps in time to hear Clark talking to one of the native servants. I tell it to you, master. I have heard it too many times. It's nonsense, Loma. Just jungle talk, native rubbish. No, master. Many times before, a white man, he say rubbish. But me, Loma, he see zombie. Not one zombie, not two, but many zombies work back there in sugar cane fields. But not a white woman, Loma. No one ever saw... What's all this, Clark? Oh, uh, we were just talking. Didn't hear you come in. I know you didn't. And I'm sorry, old man, but I listened. Oh. Yes, I listened. I know you were talking about Helen... Now, what was it? Oh, just jungle nonsense. There's nothing to even think about. I'll be the best judge of that. Tell me, Loma. No. No, master. If master understand, he know our... Tell me, Loma. Oh, come strong. You're making a fuss over nothing. Loma! Yes, master. Did I ever beat you? No, master. I'm going to, Loma. Beat you till you can't stand if you don't tell me. Listen, John, this is no way to behave. I tell you, you come with me and I'll explain. Come? Where? Come along and I'll show you. Together, the two men... Leave the bungalow. Loma, his eyes filled with tears, stands at the top of the Lanai steps and watches them disappear into the underbrush. Down toward the sea, Clark leads the way, his set jaw the only answer to Strong's questions. But Clark, this pathway doesn't lead any place except to the cemetery. I know it. That's where we're going. What in heaven's name is it all about? Why don't you tell me? I want to prove that the whole thing is nonsense before I tell you. I thought you were my friend. I'm friend enough to want to save your reason. Oh, there's an open grave. Now, go ahead. I want to get that spade. Clark. Clark. What? Helen's grave. It's been opened. What? Her grave, Clark. It's been opened. You'll find out in a minute. Now, stand back while I dig. Oh, let me, Clark. Let me. No. Oh, it ought to be. Not yet. Clark. Clark. The casket's gone. These devils have taken her. My Helen for their dear little voodoo. No, John, no. Zombies. At breakneck speed, the two men race back to their bungalow. Loma from the veranda sees them coming up the pathway and runs to meet them. In silence, Clark points to the brush, and Loma in the lead breaks into the thick tropic growth. Dusk finds them struggling up the steep slopes of the Cape with that energy born of frenzied fear and nameless horror. Loma holds up his hand. In the strained silence, the men listen to the sharp crack of cane knives on stalks of cane, the crackling of falling cane leaves. Loma motions strong to come forward. He forces aside the sugar cane and stares, horror-stricken, into the clearing. Helen! 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 Horrible clock. Ghastly story. You understand now why John acts as he does. And why I wanted you here tonight. Then she was buried alive? No, she wasn't buried alive. But she wasn't dead? Yes, she was dead. She was a zombie. A dead person raised from the grave. A body without mind or soul. But it's impossible. That's what I said to Loma. No, Helen was dead. 
killed by the curse brought on her by Clarissa's jealous hatred and raised from the grave to be a zombie by the same voodooism that killed her. Yes, yes. Uh, Clarissa, what happened to her? The natives killed her. And Helen, you you buried her again? We have had a salt. Salt? Yes, salt. If zombies eat anything containing salt, they return to their graves in peace. And you fed her salt? Yes, she... She crumpled up at our feet, dead, really dead. Out of deference to people who are still alive, character names in these unsolved mysteries have been changed. Inasmuch as any solution must of necessity be supposition, liberties of time, place, and character exist in the solution that will be presented after you have heard from your sponsor. Gentlemen, the solution for which you've been waiting. Have you really a reasonable explanation of how such a thing could have happened? I'll answer that by asking you a question. Do you think that any explanation of such a ghastly affair could be classified as reasonable? No, I suppose not. But it happened, and so I say, how could it happen? In the first place, don't imagine this is an isolated case. So serious is the matter of zombies in the island of Haiti that the government has been compelled to pass the following law, Article 249 of the Code Penal of the Republic of Haiti. Also shall be qualified as attempted murder the employment which may be made against any person of substances which, without causing actual death, produces a lethargic coma more or less prolonged. If, after the administration of such substances, the person has been buried, the act shall be considered murder, no matter what the result that follows. And the government thinks that these zombies are people who have been poisoned and who have been certified as dead and buried while in the state of suspended animation. I mean that they have been given a poison that kills the brain, but leaves their motor faculties unimpaired. Between you and me, I don't think that the government really believes that. But after all, how would you try to frame a law against taking corpses out of their graves and making them work in the cane field? Yes, I see the difficulty there. But just the same, I don't see how even voodooism can make a corpse walk. Have you ever heard of inanimate objects being moved by the power of mind? Yes, I have. And isn't it possible that the same worker in black magic or voodooism that killed the person by power of mind could take that inanimate object to the corpse and make it move? Do you believe that? Yes. And I'll give you the final proof, at least my way of thinking. What is that? The fact that the natives themselves killed Clarissima, the native girl, because they knew that with the assistance of the witch doctors, she killed and made a zombie out of Helen. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.